Well, uh, good evening everyone. Once again, we have an alternative service for you. Uh, like We've had many alternative services throughout the year, our watch night service. I'm speaking to you here from the manse, uh, not from the church where we would normally be. Uh, but you're all very welcome. And uh, after this service is over, I'll be going and having a cup of tea and a tonic or something like that. Not in solid ground as we normally would have, but I encourage you all to have a nice cup of something uh, after the, this service. We're, we're not going to have a countdown at the end of the service this year. We're, we're simply, uh, Ruth has recorded a song uh, and we're, we're going to play that. Uh, it's a form of the ironic blessing that's going to take us through the, into the into the, the new year. Uh, and Norman's going to pray. Uh, he has recorded a prayer for us. So uh, I'm just going to simply start off uh, by reading from God's word. And I'm going to read uh, from Luke chapter 2, reading from verse 25. Now there was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon, who was a righteous and a devout man. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. And it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Christ. Moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what the custom of the law required, Simeon took him in his arms and he praised God saying, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you now dismiss your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all people. A light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. The child's father and mother marveled at what was said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to Mary his mother, This child is destined to cause the falling and rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be spoken against, so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own, souls, your own soul too. Amen. And we ask God to bless us as we read his word together. This time last year when we were uh, in church, contemplating what was going to lie ahead in, in uh, 2020. None of us could have predicted what 2020 was going to be like, how it would uh, uh, unravel. But uh, it has been a year, 2020, unlike any other year in living memory. And we were all sitting poised at the beginning of the year, just coming out at the tail end of the winter, poised, ready for spring to spring, and uh, we would get out. But we had to pause. A big pause button was pressed because a virus was coming in from the east. A deadly virus, highly infectious, and indeed proving fatal to so many who were infected by it. In March, our country was locked down. We were told to stay at home. Lots of our normal activity just stopped. School and business, uh, our recreation, even visiting our loved ones, visiting grannies and grandas, all stopped. All, all the things except those essential services, which had to continue, obviously. And then it began what I have felt a time of waiting. Since March, we've been waiting for normal to resume. That we can get back to our normal day activities. And here we are at the end of 2020. And we're still waiting. And as we look into 2021, we're know we're going, we know we're going to be waiting for, for how long? We don't know, but we're still going to be waiting for normal to return. In our passage that I, that I just read from Luke chapter 2, we read here about a man who was waiting. A man called Simeon. And he had been waiting for what was described here as the consolation of Israel. What that simply means, he was waiting for Israel to be accepted, to be received back to be welcomed back into a relationship with Creator God. He was a righteous and a devout man, we're told here. So he knew, he knew about the sinful position of mankind, and in particular, the separation between the chosen nation, Israel, and Yahweh, and God. But as a righteous and devout man, he would also have known uh, about the Messiah, about the Christ, the anointed one. Those two words simply mean anointed. The one who was anointed to bring the relationship back again, to, to, to bring it, uh, to, be, to be consoled again. 
But he was a man not just with historical head knowledge. He hadn't just read about this Messiah uh, and heard about the Messiah being taught. He was a man who was filled with the Spirit, led by the Spirit. The Spirit was upon him, it says here. See, he didn't just know about the Messiah. He'd been given a promise about the Messiah that he would not die until he saw this Christ, this Saviour. We're not told, you know, exactly what he knew or didn't know. We're not told exactly how long Simeon had been waiting, but it seems to me to be a, a long time. But what we read about is a man who's waiting was over. He was one day moved by the Spirit to go to the temple. So we don't know exactly what he knew about the Christ, but he knew the Christ exactly when he saw baby Jesus. He had no doubt who this baby was. The Spirit had moved him and had revealed it to him. And he goes over and he takes this baby into his arms and he praises God. Sovereign God, he says, as you have promised, you now dismiss your servant in peace. Simeon is now holding the Saviour in his arms and praising God. This man seeing salvation, having waited, waiting is over, seeing salvation. And he seems to know a little something about this salvation as well. Many in Israel had interpreted the coming of the Messiah and they had interpreted it wrongly. They were expecting some conqueror, some mighty leader to come and, and to bring Israel back to the ascendancy, to put, this, to put them on the top of the pile so that all the nations would be below them. But Simeon has a different understanding of who Jesus was going to be. He would be a saviour not just for the, the Israelite nation, but he would be for the Gentiles as well. A light of revelation to the Gentiles. And as far as the Israelite nation would, was concerned, he's going to bring glory to those people, but he would cause the rising and falling of many. There would be division in Israel because of this Messiah. And at the end, he points uh, to a sword piercing Mary's soul. And, and there he's pointing and, and pointing forward to the time that Jesus would die on the cross and the heartbreak that Mary would feel as her son uh, hang on the cross. On the cross for us, by the way. And what we're reading here is one snippet in one man's story. And that story is set within a much larger narrative, a salvation story. A story, a narrative that involves millions, millions of individual lives throughout time. And that story, folks, has never paused. The pause button has never been pressed on God working out this salvation story. It's continued through generation after generation in many different contexts, many different normals if we want to call it that. This story has continued through wars and famines, natural disasters, man-made disasters, pandemics. And we know recently that God has unveiled this story throughout our lockdown. The Holy Spirit is never on pause. And as we approach 2021, I suppose we're all asking the question, what lies in our future? What does the future hold for the world, for our nation, our own new nation here? Uh, and, and indeed for us as individuals, one little story. Like Sammy, and we've got one little story. The first thing I want you to, to think about is this. Is salvation, is Jesus going to be part of your normal? We had that on the cross after Easter. We, we put signs on both of the crosses at the church. Will Jesus be part of your new normal? Whatever that's going to look like. But we would say to you, don't wait until the new normal comes. Do it now. You've only a few minutes left of this year. Don't even wait to next year. You can do that now by asking Jesus into your life. By recognising who Jesus is. Maybe you've known that head knowledge You've been taught it for many years and you've remembered stories from Sunday school. Don't wait any longer. If I asked you the question, what are you waiting for? You may not even be able to answer that question. So don't wait. Make Jesus part of your new normal. 
And if you're watching this and you're a follower of Jesus, you have an important story. It's just one story, but it's an important story. One story in millions, but it's an important story because it's your story. It's the Holy Spirit working in your life and leading you and guiding you just the same way the Holy Spirit led and guided Simeon. Your story is not on pause in 2021. There should be no waiting for the followers of Jesus for the new normal to come. We should be taking every opportunity to share our story, taking every opportunity to get to know Jesus more as we worship together. We're allowed to do that. Bringing our kids to Sunday school, we're allowed to do that because we can do it in a safe way. We can Bible study together. We can pray together. And in all of this, we will see the Holy Spirit at work. We will be part of that as we as we go through this tough time together as one in Christ Jesus, as a congregation of Christ's church. And wherever you're watching, whatever congregation you're involved in, you too are part of a body that meets in a location. Meet as often as you can, as safely as you can. And we'll do this, folks, with God's blessing. He's continued to pour that blessing out throughout the lockdown. And for whatever length of time uh, these regulations and restrictions last, God's blessing will continue. In a minute or two, we're going to move from 2020 into 2021. Uh, and Ruth is going to sing a, a song based around those words from the ironic blessing from Numbers. And that's just going to play throughout. There's going to be no countdown. We're just going to let God, the words of God's blessing, fall upon us as we move from one year to the next. But I want to say thank you to Norman, who has recorded a prayer. And we're going to hear that prayer uh, just now. But from me... Um, every blessing for 2021 folks as we journey together bringing Christ and God glory by the power and the leading of the Holy Spirit take care good evening everyone and let us all come together and let us just pray out in 2020 dear God thank you that you make all things new thank you for all that you've allowed into our lives this past year. The good along with the hard things, which have reminded us how much we need you and rely on your presence filling us every single day. Heavenly Father, thank you for helping us to make it through this difficult year. Thank you that you have carried us through the uncertainty of deep waters through the flames of trials and through the pain of hard losses. We remember those that have lost loved ones and never got to say goodbye. We pray your arms of comfort and strength would take them through the times of heartache and that they would remember their loved ones with the memories of how they used to be. For those, dear God, that have been so lonely, may they be recognised and lifted up with a neighbourly chat or phone call. We are constantly aware of how much we need you and your grace, your strength, your power working through even the toughest days. Help us to remember that the gift of Christ Emmanuel is our greatest treasure, not just at Christmas, but the whole year through. Fill us with your joy and peace of your spirit. Direct our hearts and minds towards you. And thank you for the reminder that both in seasons of celebration and in seasons of brokenness, you're still with us. You never leave us. And we're reminded of those words in, in Revelation. And he who was seated on the throne said, Behold, I am making all things new. And if we wait upon the Lord, we shall renew our strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary and they shall walk and not be faint.
Father, dear God, we thank you that no situation is too far out of your control to provide. For you are Jehovah Jireh, the God who provides. We thank you that you own it all and hold everything in your hands. We thank you that we have got scientists who have generated a vaccine. And we pray that it is completely rolled out in 2021. We know only too well that this world has been shaken by the virus. But we pray that many have found hope in you and not in this world. Because that hope in you cannot be shaken because you are Jehovah. And as we approach 2021, we ask that you would provide for our needs. We ask for your grace and blessings to be shared over this world. And we pray for your blessings to cover us. We pray that you would help us to prosper and make every plan that you have birthed in our heart to succeed. We pray that others would take notice of your goodness and could not help but stop and say, these are the ones that the Lord has blessed. Father, thank you for your great love and blessing over all of our lives. Thank you that your favour has no end, but it lasts an entire lifetime. Forgive us for sometimes forgetting that you are intimately acquainted with all our ways, that you know what concerns us and you cover us with your almighty shield. We ask that you would walk that we ask that we would walk in your blessing and goodness today. That your face would shine on us. Shine, Jesus, shine. Fill this land with your Father's glory. That you would open the right doors for all of our lives and for our loved ones. That you would close the wrong doors and protect us from those we need to walk away from. Establish the work of your hands and bring to fulfilment all that you have given us to do in these days. And we pray that you would make our way purposeful and our footsteps firm out of your goodness and love. Give us a heart of wisdom to hear your voice and make us strong by your huge love and grace. In Jesus' name we pray it. Amen. And may I wish everyone uh, a very blessed 2021. Amen.